in terms of it just kind of being the last, I guess the last full practice day, uh, have you gotten what you needed out of this camp? Yeah, it's been very productive. Um, you know, you set out a clear objective. You start the spring, everybody does it a little bit different. I mean, we know what the rules of engagement are, but uh, for what we wanted to accomplish, we feel pretty good about where we're at. You know, the next couple of weeks are critical. You know, I think it's a good rule when you have this dead time, but uh, it allows guys, you know, mentally to get away. And we got a long campaign coming up. Everybody does. And how we handle it, uh, you know, will determine a lot of factors, especially early on in camp and early part of the season. So when you have the right guys like we do, I'm very confident. And uh, but in terms of spring, very pleased. It seems like two more teams are kind of going away from the full three-day minicamp or, or eliminating sometimes minicamp altogether. Right. Why, why is that, you think, more of a trend now in the league? Yeah. I, I, you know, there's a lot of opinions. I mean, you go back to the lockout year. You know, people use that. Certainly the COVID year. Um, but any times you have an opportunity, you know, in an, an environment to train the job that you're, you've been hired to do and you can do it, and it is voluntary. So that's – and we mean what we say and say what we mean in that regards. And we've had guys that life goes on outside of it, and that's, and that's good. But there's the guys that want to come in here and work. Uh, they make a little bit of money, certainly around their teammates. I think that's a positive. And ultimately, at the end of the day, you got to make the best decision for your team. And, you know, and some people, you know, they may break early because they're, they're playing in the Hall of Fame game. Or, you know, they may have a veteran team and they came off a long playoff run. I mean, if you remember back, like Tony Dungy, he didn't even, sometimes those bets wouldn't even come in until a little bit later in, uh, in training camp because they were consistently playing late in the year. And so everybody's got to do what they think is best for their team. Young, maybe you change the system. So, uh, you know, we feel good. We've used just about every you know, opportunity they've allowed us, and we're pleased with it. Hey, Art, uh, you finished up the spring with Dez, you know, as the guy. What stood out to you seeing him throughout this period? Well, like a lot of our players, Cam, I mean, he's made daily improvements. We've thrown a lot. You know, there are certainly things that continue to harp on that will continue to evolve. We'll never stay the same, continue to improve. In certain years, we you may have to play a little bit different. We've said many times we're not going to ever compromise our core values and things we believe in and some of our habits and things we talk about behind the scenes. But in terms of schematics, there's a lot of things sometimes we'll, we'll look to improve and adapt. And so we've thrown a lot at them. I think you've seen a lot of daily improvement. Um, certainly, this is a passing camp. It's no non-contact. Things can change, certainly, when you get more into real football. But uh, very pleased with the progress he's made day in and day out. When it comes to, to Des, how much um, was he comfortable with the play-action game coming in here and versus how much do you feel like you've had to coach yeah. him up in that? Well, everybody. I mean, we're all, you know, even for me, I mean, there's things that I, I always looked at to improve on. I think if you stop trying to improve and never think you have all the right right answers, you're going to get passed up. You see that in any industry. People get arrogant, they get stale, and you never want that. In terms of Dez and like a lot of our players, but you know some of the things they asked him, and he was obviously very successful in college, and there's a lot of great schemes, and some things translate, some things don't. And there's some things with certain players, Josh, that you know, it's how comfortable and what kind of play action. You know, as it gets marked as play action, how many times they, they really – is it hard play action when they turn their back and flip their head around? And some guys haven't done that, but they get to this – or you may ask them to do that, and they're very good spatial players. They, they, they can. They can turn their back to the defense, flip around. They've got trust and they see it. Like a great point guard sometimes, they see things before they happen or anticipate. Uh, and every player has been a little bit different than I've worked with, uh, but very comfortable with Des. I think he's got that. There's a lot of things that we may ask him to anticipate or wait a tick. And not everybody can do that, but he can. He's shown that so far. So that gives us a lot of uh, hope. And uh, yeah, I mean, every everybody's, every system's a little bit different too. So uh, pleased with that, with him in that regard. Did he show that at Cincinnati? Had you seen that on film? Or there's some traits, there, there's some traits. And you don't even necessarily understand what they're asking them. Unless you're sitting in those meeting rooms, you may run similar concepts, but everybody's going to, Teach them a little bit different. Like, that's why I always laugh, too. There's the arrogance sometimes. Guys, they may have learned this play from somewhere, and they may have had success with it, and they get on TV or they get on whatever platform and pontificate like that's the only way to do it. It's nonsense. There's been a lot of people, been a lot of very successful in different schemes. There's things that we tweak year in and year out. 
hey, on this play, like we're passing up this read, let's try to take advantage. So we give certain parameters, let's, let's get to it if we get this look. And that may be different. You know, if, if Matt Ryan walked in here and went to one of our office meetings, there's a lot of things that would be foreign to him and he was here, you know, what am I gonna call it, a year and a half ago. Right. So, you know, that, that's, that's the constant evolution you're trying to make and tweak and improve. Um, so there's things you see on film but until you really get behind the scenes and you work with them day in and day out, uh, there is something wrong. But uh, very, very pleased with Dez and the way he goes about his business and handles himself. Art, it's kind of sticking on the Dez tip. He was talking to some of the reporters yesterday about not throwing the pass to Kyle yet and maybe the chemistry there. How much value do you put on that? Last year in training camp, and they'll, they'll get on the same page. Yeah. I'm very confident in that. Uh, this, the rookie draft class and what you see from them, just evaluation to this point. I know it's not full contact and whatnot, but how they've adapted. Uh, similar, I thought, to last year's. It's a mature group. Uh, again, I mean, a lot of things that you don't worry about. I think we got the right kind of guys in here. Uh, they, they've continued to work. Like I said, I've been very pleased with the progress. Like, everything's foreign to them. And uh, I think they've handled so far, everything we've thrown at him, I think they've handled it pretty well. John, has he been what you anticipated it would be when you drafted him? Oh, yeah, same question. There's no difference whether it was DeMarco or Javon or Big Zay Malone. I've been very pleased with all those guys. I guess about this you, when you, you know, even the night you guys drafted him, you talked about he's not a running back. He's more of an offensive player. So I was just wondering if you see if the traits that you saw in Texas have translated already. We do not have buyers remorse, so that's what you're asking. <laughs> when we talk about Ryan Nielsen developing individuals, how does that translate as a coordinator? Well, it's a lot of coaches. I mean, I think Dave Grone does a hell of a job. I think Marquise does a hell of a job developing players. I mean, I think we've got a strong staff. There's a lot of work that goes into it. Uh, you know, it's been great to have Dave Huxable here. You know, Dave's a guy with a lot of, a lot of knowledge. Uh, been in college football a long time. Been with Ryan. Ryan actually worked under him at NC State. Uh, and, you know, Dave's seen a lot of these trends, and he's a fantastic football coach. Having Jerry Gray in here, these guys, Steve Jackson back on the defense. I mean, people forget the wealth of knowledge that Steve and Jerry have. Go back and look at those 07, 08 DB rooms we had in Washington. We had some great players and vets. I mean, you know, it's like the players forget. You know, these guys, I mean, you know, like you get reference. I mean, Jerry can give references about – Defending certain, you know, Jerry Rice in the 80s or, you know, what Eric Dickerson was like. You know, they have so much knowledge and they're great teachers and great communicators. So, very pleased with the staff. I think we've got a, a lot of good teachers. You guys have a good problem as far as having so much talent in the running back room. Has, have you learned anything this spring of maybe of how, how you use all that talent? Yeah, we have a plan for them all. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we don't just throw darts at the draft board and not have a plan. And, uh, you know, that's not fair to the players. If we come in here and, you you know, if you're going to invest that heavy early or in free agency, if you don't have a plan. And so we got a versatile group, same way I feel about the tight end group and the receiver group. Uh, very pleased. You know, you really, we can label them certain positions. And, uh, but you look at it as a collective, it's a very unique and talented skill group. If you, that's what I'm saying is you combine our receivers, tight ends, and backs in that room. What kind of impact did Michael Petrie have in the selection of Bijan? Well, like, you know, we run a very inclusive process, and then ultimately at the end of the day, Terry and I, you know, that's what we're paid to do is make the decisions. But we listen to everybody. We've got a great football staff. And, you know, guys that, you know, scouted him, Dante, and, and guys that put a lot of work in and, you take everybody's opinion, and we, we gather that information. And uh, you know, I think you know Mike Petrie is another guy. He's a fantastic football coach, and certainly a bright future, and could do a lot of different jobs. Uh, Mike does a fantastic job. I mean, you just look at the de the development with Caleb Huntley last year. I mean, these are little nuances in the protections that Mike Mike I thought did a great job with, and you know, with Carlos Washington, a guy that's coming here and. 
you know, th these guys, he's a hell of a teacher and a really good football coach. Uh, but, you know, we, we have an inclusive process, and Mike was certainly part of that. With a guy like D. Alford, how did y'all's vision for him kind of evolve as, as he did in his role in, on this roster? Well, we looked at his skill set. Um, you know, D's had a unique road to the NFL. Uh, very pleased with the spring D's had. And he, he's another guy. He's very consistent in his habits, and all he does is just work. And he works, and he works, and works, and gets better every day. And there were certainly traits, Tory, that he thought that he could play inside, because that's a that's a hard position to play. That inside corner nickel, whatever you want to call it, people call it star, whatever guru term you want to use. But uh, to cover those routes inside, I mean, there's a lot of space, and um, they tougher than hell, quick. Very, very pleased. But that was those traits you saw as, as those guys, we brought him in and work him out. And uh, he's really done a nice job. Your old quarterback from last year, Marcus Mariota's you know, Netflix documentary, I guess based off of part of last year. Anything you're curious about seeing in Not that? I mean, Netflix does a good job. And there's like a TV show. I'm sure there'll be some good parts. I'm sure there'll be some historical fiction. Um, that Ryan Neal <coughs> showed him a technique, he implemented it, it worked well for him. He clearly is able to kind of take that coaching and implement it. This is a bit of abstract, but is that something a player that you can scout in a player that they're going to be able to take that coaching and implement it and work it into their game? Yeah, that's a good question. But, I, you know, I think what you, you look for, and Calais is a guy who's been in a lot of schemes, right? Going back to Arizona, he's had a lot of fantastic football coaches. And so he's playing in multiple schemes. And so you see that adaptability and the guy's productive in multiple schemes. So that gives you a lot of confidence that, hey, this guy is who he says he is. It's not just this, you know, personality that you guys see on the outside. It's day to day when you really watch the tape and you, you talk to people. But that, that's what gives you a lot of confidence is that flexibility. He hasn't just been in one system. So that is what, what's hard if a guy's only played a certain way for 15 years and then you ask him, is he something completely different? Yeah, I mean, they may make it work, but it, it may not go the way you want. That's a, that's a, there's a lot of habits to break or, or something so, so foreign to him. But Clayus, uh, he's been, like I said, he's been on a lot of good defensive schemes and had a lot of good coaches, and he's been successful in all of them. Base. You bring in those guys. What impact have you seen for them on the young, the young guys in particular, maybe the overall defense? Well, I mean, certainly with, with Jesse. I mean, you're making a big investment, and you're a guy that you're anticipating to be a, an impact player, and that's why you bring them in here. And and you better better bring in the right guys. And uh, Jesse, you certainly feel very confident. That's who he's been. You know, day to day, the interactions, the guy they can watch, they can emulate. Uh, certainly a guy that's here, he's new. He's got to find his his voice um, as well. But I think you know when you just watch him day in and day out, it gives you a lot of confidence. And guys, you know, that group, that DB group, it's going to be a very competitive camp. And they, they've they done a good job. I mean, I think Jalen Hawkins has had a terrific spring and what we've asked him to do. Micah Abernathy, I mean, there's a lot of, we got a lot of depth, a lot of great competition. So excited Jesse's here. Um, and same thing with Clayus and Bud, David, Caden. Uh, very pleased. I want to stick with the defensive front for a second. I was talking to David on Yamada yesterday, and he, we were talking about how so many veterans have come in on this defensive front, but he made the comment that this is still Grady's group. <clears throat> what does that kind of say about the way that some of these veterans that y'all have brought in respect what Grady Jarrett has done here for himself? Grady's a real guy. There's nothing phony about Grady Jarrett. So I think people respect authentic people. Um, the reason we wanted Grady back and what we, why we invested the way we did, like I had gone on record before. Uh, again, I, I don't want to have recency bias. It's like when you go somewhere, oh, that was the best, whatever, I just, but in my history and take, you know, whatever. Uh, he's got to be one of the top leaders I've been around. Sticking with respect and trust, 
when you talk to all the defensive guys, they speak so highly of Brian Nielsen already. What is it about him that he's been able to come in so early and implement and make his mark? You talking about like he's like a cult leader? Always, always joking. Uh, the line guys, they, they, those things have been called Colts. I mean, like I saw it with Russ Grimm, I saw it with Mike Munchak and Dwayne Ledford. Uh, there's a certain, you know, characteristics that it. No, he's a good teacher. I mean, that's it's why we brought him in here. We were excited to get Ryan. And so you, you want to make sure that they're getting his intent. And uh, they, they seem to be, and hopefully they translate into camp. But they're excited. Like I said, that, that's a good group in there. And there's a lot of guys in there. We've got a veteran group. Certainly, a lot of new faces, and everybody got on the same page. And like I said, you know, Hux is in there, Lanier's in there, Mario, and uh, you know they work well together. Anything else? All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>